Most of the technology that shapes your life didn't begin as a company, it began as a side project. I mean, something experimental, something that wasn't supposed to matter. For example, Facebook started as a dorm room experiment. GitHub started as a weekend tool built by developers for developers. And Linux began as one person's personal operating system. None of these started with a pitch deck for, or a roadmap, if you will. They started with curiosity. And what's surprising that this isn't just how tech used to work. This is increasingly how the future of tech is being built right now. Now, if you zoom out and look at the foundations of the modern internet, you start to notice a pattern. Many of the most important technologies we rely on today were never designed as products in the first place. For example, we mentioned this earlier, but Linux, it wasn't created to power servers across the world. It was a personal project. Another good example I like is Python. It wasn't built to dominate machine learning and data science. It was created because the author wanted a more enjoyable scripting language, which is pretty cool. Thank you for that, by the way. Even the World Wide Web itself, it began as a simple system to share documents between researchers at CERN. These weren't optimized ideas, they were exploratory ones. And I really think it's that distinction that matters. When you're building something as a side project, you're allowed to experiment without certainty, you're allowed to fail, you're allowed to build something and it'd be kind of weird or incomplete, if you will without pressure to see if it's going to succeed. And companies by design try to reduce uncertainty and take that all away. Whereas side projects are where uncertainty is allowed to exist. That's why so many new paradigms emerge from them. I mean, GitHub's own Octoverse report shows that there are over, now there are over a hundred million developers on the platform. And the vast majority of repositories are personal, experimental, or learning driven projects. I mean, in other words, most code being written today is not tied to a product launch or a quarterly goal. Side projects aren't just niche, they're internet's research lab. I like that one. This is why I'm also such a strong believer in hobby projects. I mean, personally, I'm always tinkering on something. Almost everything I understand deeply about technology came from building things that didn't need to exist. Right now, I'm working on a small side project purely for fun. It's a simple tool that generates actually visualize and visualizes video ideas, not something I probably will ever ship but it's just a place to experiment. I love, especially with computer vision, I love tinkering around and building different things with that. And some days it's visualization that barely works, other days the whole thing breaks, but that's fine, it's the point. It's something I'm just building, and I'm building it with JetBrain's free non-commercial license, which makes their professional IDEs available to anyone building projects on the side. I mean, not just students, not just companies, literally anyone like you and I who wants to experiment seriously without turning it into a business. Because historically, that's how most of the most important tools we rely on today started, as someone tinkering without pressure. By the way, I linked them down below, so go check them out. I am a huge fan of JetBrains. I've been using them forever, uh, and I'm really excited that they're doing this. All right, let's get back to it. If you zoom out even further, you start to see that hobby developers aren't just influencing innovation. They're holding the entire system together. Now, according to the Linux Foundation, over 90% of modern software applications depend on open source components. And that includes the operating systems we use, the cloud infrastructures our apps run on, and the AI frameworks driving today's models. What's really easy to miss, though, is that most of this code was not written by companies. It was written by individuals. For example, GitHub's data shows that the majority of open source contributors are not full-time maintainers. They're people like you and I, fixing bugs, improving documentation, or adding features in their spare time. Even the largest tech companies in the world are built on top of ecosystems they didn't fully create themselves. It really makes you think the modern tech stack isn't one monolithic system. It's a patchwork of millions of small contributions, which means hobby developers aren't optional. They're structurally essential. The internet doesn't run on products, it runs on shared experiments. So why do hobby developers matter more right now than ever? I mean, what's changed recently is how important this has become. Technology is getting more complex, not less. AI systems, distributed infrastructure, hardware acceleration. No single company can realistically explore every possible direction. 
and side projects absorb risk that the industry right now can't afford to take. At the same time, tools have become radically more accessible. There's cloud platforms, open source models, and professional grade IDEs that mean what once required a company now fits onto a laptop. I mean, according to Stack Overflow Developer Survey, more than 70% of developers say that they code outside of work. And this isn't because they're required to, it's because they want to explore ideas that might not fit into their typical nine to five or their job descriptions. There's also something I think we need to call out here, which is a human reason this matters. Burnout in tech is real. When people only build under pressure, creativity gets really narrow. Side projects give developers a space to learn without deadlines, metrics, or performance reviews which is healthier for individuals, and it turns out, it's healthier for the ecosystem too. Because innovation, when we really step back, it doesn't come from urgency alone, it will come from playing and having fun. So what does this mean for you and I? What can we actually take away from this? Well, one, if you're a developer, side projects aren't a distraction from your career, so stop thinking they are. They're often the fastest way to compound new skills, so explore, learn technologies through it. They let you understand systems really deeply, build intuition, and explore ideas that no course or tutorial can fully teach. Or if you're taking a tutorial, do that too, just have fun with it. I mean, if you're tech curious but not a developer, it's worth knowing that many of the tools you rely on started as experiments, so support your developer friends. Open ecosystems matter because they allow ideas to surface before anyone knows they're valuable. And if you're building a company, the most important signals often come from what hobbyists are experimenting with, so keep that in mind. I mean, these, these hobbyists are experimenting with things long before something looks market ready, which really brings us to the future of tech doesn't arrive fully formed. It, emerges from projects that weren't supposed to matter. History keeps teaching us, I think, the same thing over and over again when we stop and look at it. The same lesson, if you will. The technologies that reshape the world don't start with certainty, they start with curiosity. And right now, the future of tech is being quietly built by people working nights, weekends, mornings, I don't know about mornings, on things that they simply want to understand. And that's not a weakness of the system, it's really the reason why it works and why we can keep on moving forward at fast pace with tech. Now, I don't know about you, but it comes down to always having access to the right tools. And as I mentioned earlier, go check out JetBrains. I absolutely love their products. And the fact that there is a free version that you can utilize to build what starts as a side hobbyist project, but who knows? Maybe it's the next Facebook or maybe not a social app. Let's, let's figure out something else outside of a social app. Anyways, I linked them down below. Go check them out. And let me know what you're building. I hope this video inspired you to get building something. Just tinker, because even if it's not directly the next big thing, the creativity from building something will flow into other areas too. All right, have a great day, everyone. See you soon.